Well, you know, the founding of the state of Israel is a miracle. Now, you may have heard otherwise, and you may have heard controversial things about the state and her founding, but I want you to understand what a miracle it was, so stay with me. Welcome to Out of Zion with Susan Michael, an exploration of the Bible and the land of Israel. From ancient biblical sites to the story behind the stories, join Susan on a journey through the most exciting book on the planet. Hit the subscribe button for future episodes, which will deepen your faith and bring the Bible to life. And now here's our host, Susan Michael. Well, welcome to today's Israel Answer episode. We're on part four of connecting the Bible to today. We have so far discussed the development of Judaism since the Bible, the development of Christianity since the Bible, that persistent evil of anti-Semitism. And today we're going to talk about the founding of the modern state of Israel. I believe you will agree with me what a miracle it is, and it reflects a great God who can turn the heart of the king as the Bible tells us, whenever he wants to, to fulfill his purposes. So there's lots of history I could tell, but I'm going to start with the birth of the Zionist movement about 200 years ago. You know, it was started by a Jewish journalist living in Austria. He was a totally assimilated Jew. He didn't celebrate any of the Jewish holidays or didn't go to synagogue, and he thought that really that the future of the Jewish people was to be assimilated. And then he went to France where he covered a court case that was taking place, and it was a totally anti-Semitic court case on trumped-up charges against a Jewish soldier in the French forces. And this journalist sat there and listened to this, and he came to the realization there was only one hope for the Jewish people, and that was that they had their own state. The journalist's name was Theodor Herzl. He went back to Austria, and he wrote a book called The Jewish State, and he laid out his proposal for the creation of one. Now, he was just a journalist. He didn't have any movement behind him, no political following, no political influence, really. But he had the idea, he saw the need for it, and wrote this book. And he said that if the Jewish people had their own nation, not only could they defend themselves and secure their own future, but that from there, they could combine their power, their, their willpower, their intellect, and be a blessing to the world. That's the vision of Zionism. It's to be a blessing to the world. Now, at the same time this was happening, there something else had happened that I described last uh, two weeks ago on our episode about the growth of Christianity. That was that the Bible had been translated into the everyday language through the printing press. It had been distributed in mass quantities, and now there were a whole new segment of Christianity that was growing, and it was the Bible-based segment or the evangelical segment of Christianity. And it became so strong in England that, and this movement taught from the scriptures, they saw in the scriptures that God had made all these promises to the Jewish people and that one day they would be restored to their ancient homeland. And so these early evangelical Christians in the UK were called restorationists. They prayed for and they advocated for the restoration of the Jewish people to their homeland. Well, it just so happens there was one of these Bible-believing Christians in Austria where Theodor Herzl lived who had done a complete study of the book of Daniel, and he had come to the conclusion that 1897 was a key year in the return of the Jews to their ancient homeland. Well, it was in the late 1800s that Theodore Herzl had just written his book, 
And this evangelical Christian who was a um, serving in the British Foreign Service, he was a chaplain in the British Embassy in Vienna, Austria. He's walking down the street and he looks in the a storefront of a bookstore, and he sees this new book by this Jewish journalist called The Jewish State. He buys a copy, goes straight home, reads it cover to cover, and then he goes to look for and find Theodore Herzl. When he does, he knocks on his door. Theodore Herzl opens the door, and this British chaplain says to him, I have been waiting for you. You are the Moses that are going to lead the Jewish people home. And this is the beginning of the story of a really amazing friendship between this totally assimilated and secular Jewish journalist and this Bible-believing, evangelical, restorationist Christian <laughs> chaplain of the British Foreign Service. And together, they beat the drums and they got before world leaders and they started a movement in support of the Jewish return to the homeland. And yes, in 1897, Theodore Herzl organized the very first Zionist Congress. And at that Congress, he referred to the few Christians that were in the audience, referred to them as Christian Zionists. Now, while all of this is taking place within Judaism and within Christianity, there was something else amazing taking place that honestly, I don't think the state of Israel would have ever been born had this not happened. That was that the great and the final Islamic empire called the Ottoman Empire was beginning to weaken and to decline. And they made the fatal mistake of siding with the Germans in World War I and they lost. And so the Ottoman Empire then was broken up. It, it, was, it was over. It had all come to an end. And the f Allied forces, which were the British, the French, and the Italians, uh, with some support from the Russians, but they broke up the Ottoman Empire, and they came up with a plan to divide it up into smaller nation states to serve the indigenous peoples of those various areas of the old Ottoman Empire. So what does this mean? This means that before World War I, the entire North Africa, Middle East, up into Turkey, and even into Asia Minor was all one empire. And in the very middle of it was the ancient land of Canaan, the land of Judea and Samaria, the land that Jesus had lived in, the land we call today Israel, was right there in the heart of this huge empire. If you had been a Christian in the late 1700s, 1800s, would you have believed that the Ottoman Empire would be broken up, that after 1300 years of Islamic rule in that area, that it would be free for a Jewish state to be set up? That would take a lot of faith, if you ask me. But there were Christians that were praying for just that to happen. And for hundreds of years, Christians were praying for, preaching about, and advocating for the restoration of the Jewish people to their homeland. And the breakup of the Ottoman Empire not only set into place the legal context for the state of Israel to be formed, but actually it formed every nation state we have in the Middle East today, every single one of them. They did not exist before World War I. So not only is Israel's founding legal and legitimate, it's the same legal founding that every other country in the Middle East is based on. Just name it whether it's Iraq, Kuwait, Oman, the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, name it. It all has the same legal foundation. So you have to understand the battle against Israel today is not really about Palestinian homes or Palestinian homeland.
That's all kind of a recent invention to fight against Israel. Israel has several things against it in this story. Number one is there was something else that happened after the breakup of the Ottoman Empire, you must understand. That was that there became an Islamic reaction to it, a fight against it, and a fight to reestablish the Islamic Empire, and that is called the Caliphate. And that movement is started by the Muslim Brotherhood. They were formed in Egypt in 1928, and that was to react against this breakup. And so before you know it, as soon as Israel is founded, Jewish sovereignty over land that had been Islamic, there was an Islamic push against it. But today, moving forward 70 years, I mean, Israel is over 70 years old now. What's the big deal? Because our world is moving away from nationalism to globalism. So Israel was formed because of a wave of nationalism. You know, not only did that nationalism break up the Ottoman Empire into all these little nation states, it broke up the great British Empire. Today, it's about national sovereignty. And there's a push against it now by a whole movement of globalism. Also today, there is a movement of secularism. And Israel was set up to be a Jewish state. It was for the Jewish people. And it's Jewish sovereignty over this land. And a secular world hates that. They hate to think that America could be a Christian nation, and they hate to think that Israel could be a Jewish nation. The other thing against Israel is the whole move today of moral relativism. And let me tell you, the moral relativists do not like knowing that there are Ten Commandments, and they don't like the people that gave us the Ten Commandments. So this just is a little snippet today to help you understand some of the forces that were taking place that helped bring about the founding of the state of Israel. And to understand it was totally a legal founding carried on by the nations, and it was approved by the United Nations even. But the fight against Israel is because of these other movements of Islamic movements or global secularism and moral relativism that do not like Israel and continually fight against her. So I hope that this little summary of many, many years of history and maybe a little oversimplification of it helps you understand, though, the big picture in Israel's founding. We're going to talk next week with you about the modern state of Israel. So I'll see you back here. And until then, God bless. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of Out of Zion with Susan Michael. Be sure to subscribe to Out of Zion now on Apple Podcasts, cpnshows.com, YouTube, or wherever you like to listen and learn. Out of Zion with Susan Michael is a production of ICEJ USA, all rights reserved.